Hello, and welcome to Many Adventures Mini. I'd first like to say I hope everybody had a good uh, Christmas, holidays, and New Year's and everything, and that everything went good for everybody. I had a lot of fun myself, and it was good to have a nice break over December and spend time with family and just relax a little bit, though I did do a few projects over December that I will be uploading over the next few weeks. But I just wanted to also thank all the new people who subscribed over December. We definitely got way past my goal of hitting 100 subscribers. We're uh, at about 106 right now, so we overshot it by more than I was expecting. So I'm really grateful for that. So that's why I decided to kick off my first video of the year with my promised 100 subscriber giveaway video. I ran a few polls through my... Uh, Facebook page and narrowed it down to some type of monster. So I went browsing through the miniatures at my local game store until I found this really cool skeleton knight on a skeleton horse that I just ended up deciding to go with for the giveaway. I think it's a really cool mini, and if you want to know how to uh, enter into the giveaway, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll give all the details there and we'll get all of that out of the way then. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into how I painted this skeleton knight for the giveaway. All right, so to start off with, I'm giving you a little bit of a close up on this miniature. Uh, I decided to go ahead and strip off a good chunk of the original primer that was on this miniature uh, to help clean up some of the bold lines and stuff like that, and I don't really like the pre-prime that comes on a lot of the WizKid stuff, so in many cases I prefer to strip a bunch of it off and start over, which is what I ended up doing in this case. In order to replace it, I use some of my gray primer and some of my white primer, uh, using the gray to just give it a thorough base coat and doing almost like a pseudo zenithal thing with the white, just hitting the top edges of everything to get something of like a pseudo effect. I don't think it really did much in this case since uh, all of this is pretty much uh, <laughs> the same uh, kind of stuff. Um, uh, and then you saw me there, I was just removing some masking I'd put on the little clear stand. But to start off, uh, I actually use a lot of Citadel contrast paints for painting this particular miniature. So I go with this skeleton horde. Uh, I've, I found I particularly like this for doing bone stuff because it's just a, a one step go instead of painting a skeleton color and then, or a, a bone color I should say, and then coming in with a wash afterwards to make it look like aged bone. Uh, this just does it in one application, so I kind of like it for that. So I go ahead and hit all of the bony bits with that. Uh, next, I just come and hit the whole base with this uniform gray, just getting everything as thoroughly as I can. Uh, I'm going a little bit more simply on this base because I think maybe I've been spending a little bit like too much extra effort on bases that they don't really need so I was seeing how it turned out being a little bit more simple and straightforward with this one uh, and then next I take out this shining silver color it's the brightest metallic color that I have access to and I go ahead and paint it over all of the armor bits I'm doing this as an undercoat for a later step which you'll see later so it was very important that I went with the brightest silver metallic color that I could get my hands on, which happened to be this. So I just go over and I hit every single armor piece that I can, trying to be as thorough as I can and trying not to get it anywhere it's not supposed to be. Get it on the sword there, cover it around. Uh, so just as a, a quick explanation before we get to it, I'm using this as an undercoat to the uh, Black Templar contrast paint that I'm going to be using here in a minute. Uh, I decided to use the Black Templar over the silver to create kind of this black steel effect, uh, which looks pretty cool towards the end. You get kind of like black on the armors, but then the silver shines through really good on the edges, and it looks pretty neat and gives you kind of that rugged, like decrepit 
look, even though it looks kind of like a skeleton in shining armor at the moment. Uh, you, you get the effect that you're looking for once you get all the coats on, so... This is just the step that you have to be patient and wait through to get to the good part. And just going along and hitting all the steps. This, is, this model had a lot of like little details with it, so I kept having to go back and hit over stuff that I had missed. Just like little stuff and crevices and whatnot, since it was pretty easy to miss. But once I think I've gotten everything pretty well covered, I come in with the Black Templar and again just start going over all those armor bits and I kind of get the horses hair and mane bits in here too just seeing what they look like if I went with black hair on them uh, I do decide to change that later on but we'll talk about that hopefully more when it comes to it uh, but I'm just going over and you can really already see this uh, effect coming into play where the armor bits that I've covered definitely, they, they definitely look black now, but you can see a bit of the metallic showing through and definitely on the edges. And this armor has some nice detailed re recesses in it, uh, which the contrast paint shows off pretty well. Uh, I also go ahead and hit the hooves with this as well. I'm just going around and being thick and thorough with the Black Templar contrast paint trying to get everything as best as I can while trying to be very careful with my brush and try and not get it anywhere I don't want it to be. Uh, this paint, well, it is translucent. The pigment count is so high that if you accidentally put it somewhere, you pretty much have to paint over it again with normal paint to get it to go away because it's pretty strong and, and difficult to remove. So I'm just going through and blackening everything up. Uh, I use a slightly, ever so slightly thin down amount on the sword just so that the metal shows through a little bit better. Uh, and here I'm mostly using the matte white to pick out some areas uh, that I covered before that I want to use contrast paint on again, but uh, need to be touched up so that they don't have any weird splotches or look funny when I try it. So I just hit any areas that I accidentally missed with my brush and got with the wrong color. And then I also use it to fill in the eye sockets for both the rider and the horse to go along with an effect that I'm going to be doing a little bit later. And here you can see I'm using a little bit of my homemade wash now that the base is dry just to get some shadows in the rocks there and get my good contrast with that. And then I pull out the snake bite leather uh, contrast paint which I use on all of the strappy bits around the horse's leg uh, that we picked out with the white earlier I also use it on uh, the saddle and the strap going to the horse's mouth which for the life of me I can't remember what it is right now I'm sure I'll remember it later and feel silly uh, but we get that and everything else is best we can. The, the saddle was a little tricky since I had to reach down in between a few things to get to it properly, but in the end I managed it without too much extra difficulty. It wasn't the worst kind of awkward place I've ever tried to paint. But I just try and get all this going through, and in the end I decided that uh, this model looked a little bit too dark and I needed to do something to brighten it up. So I... I uh, started out here with the eyes. Uh, I'm using this purple to get kind of like an ethereal purple glow coming out of the eyes. Uh, you, you can decide for yourself whether I succeeded or not. I think it's an alright effect, if not necessarily perfect. Uh, but I liked the effect so much on the eyes that I decided I wanted to replicate that with the horse's hair uh, on the mane, on the up and bottom sides and on the tail as well so I go ahead and I paint back over the mane with white and this is a great example of you can always change your mind later on the one layer of contrast paint I put on here wasn't so thick that I couldn't paint back over it and do something different like I had decided to here so I'm just rebasing everything here with this white so that I can work with my purple and I you see you can see I have uh, mix it together with some white with using the orc purple, orc blood purple that I had, and I've got three shades of purple there. I start with the uh, palest shade uh, and start adding it in, leaving the most recessed sections of the horse's hair white, 
and working darker and darker towards the edges of the folds in the hair and towards the outer edges of the, the sculpting with those areas. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of going for almost like an ethereal purple fire look for all this hair. Uh, I think I succeeded decently well. Uh, it's not necessarily the perfect effect, but it adds a nice like pop of color to here and makes it a little bit less boring overall and gives more interesting little aspect to the mini overall. Um, and that gunmetal I pulled out, that's my darkest uh, metallic color that I have. And I'm using that as kind of like a highlight on this black armor just to point out that it's definitely metal and some of the edges are a bit more metal. I'm not doing that everywhere, but just as a little bit of an accent. So I take that off and glue it to the base. Uh, take some scenery glue here and get it pretty thoroughly around the edges here. And based off of the way that this uh, base was designed with the stones and whatnot, I get a nice section going over. And I use this very fine flocking, it looks almost like moss when it's all said and done. And go with my last step and just liberally coat everything in a coat of my uh, Vallejo matte varnish. Just get everything nice and thoroughly soaked down. And here you can see the final result. Like I said, I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, it's a pretty cool mini and I think somebody will be happy with it uh, once the giveaway is done. So we'll go ahead and I'll jump over and give you more details on that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it felt great for me getting back into the swing of things since I haven't done quite as much over the holiday weeks. So this was good for me to get back in and get back into doing things a little bit. So I had a lot of fun with it. So let's go on and I will tell you how to enter into the giveaway so that you can be sent this miniature that I painted today for free. Uh, the way I've decided to do this is I want anybody who wants to enter, leave any comment in the vid in this video. Just any comment you want in down below in this video. And then also I want everybody to send me an email to my email. I'll put it down in the description. I'll put all the directions down in the description. But send me an email to manyadventuresmini at gmail.com. Title it uh, with giveaway entry and in the body of the email put your YouTube username so that I can cross-reference it to the video to verify that you commented as well and once you get all of that done I'll select winners and announce that in next week's video and I'll email back the winner so that I can send them their mini and with that, uh, I'm really glad everybody stayed to watch and all the people who have joined to keep watching me do this. It means quite a lot to me. So if you have any comments for me, please put it down below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, including the announcement video that will come with my video next week for who won the giveaway, uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos in the future. With that, I hope to see everybody here again next week.